then take this all the way across. So your center lines, top and bottom, are for positioning and orientation. And then go ahead and have them here. And like I said before, it's okay if you take these lines and continue them all the way through. And so this one's important because on the top piece, you'll see that we have a cross. We have a center line here and down here we have a cross. That's the center line of the guitar. And so that one right there, you're kind of going to line up this center line up here and that line right there and then you can pin these like that. Now these go bar rods will, because they're going in at an angle, will push things forward or backwards or side to side. So you will, once you got glue on there, it'll scoot around. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's kind of important to have good marks where we want them. And remember these are guides. The two that are most important are going to be your center line, your midline down the length, and the center line in the middle. And once you get those lined up, you can kind of push this here. And if you get the rods to sort of oppose each other, it kind of cancels out the tendency for it to want to kind of slide. Right. right. Yeah. Now, we have three, four different mechanisms here on these go bar rods. And so part of this class is an experiment and you are the guinea pigs. Thank you very much. I appreciate you volunteering. This one has carpet under it. Um, this one right here has um, sandpaper because that's what we had at the time. And sandpaper is really good, um, except it just rubs the bejeebies out of these um, little caps. This one right here, has um, perf board on it. And so what you might want to do is if we, we don't have enough for everybody to have one, I think we only have 12 go bar decks right now. 13, I thought we said. Oh, well, if we got 13, then, then we have 11 people, then we're good. I should learn to count. Um, these should go in and that will go into the little hole. The deal is, go bar rods tend to fly. And because they're springs, they will just shoot across a room. And, you know, again, this is where you want to wear safety glasses or have some kind of eye protection when you're doing this. If you don't have eye protection, we do have some safety glasses. Uh, so, especially when you're using go bar rods or when go bar rods are starting to be used, um, we'll need to kind of goggle up. I have been hit in the face with one of these. Okay. The truth. Yeah. And so the idea here is um, put these in and get them dry fitted and kind of learn where you want to put these and how you want to orient them. And a good place to put them is here on the glue no, do not glue. Now you need to have blue tape on here before you do that. So I haven't done that yet. But that's another step. You want to tape these and get them right where it is so when you paint them, then you just take the blue tape off. Don't cut the blue tape where you can't see the blue tape. That defeats the purpose of having the blue tape and reminding yourself to pull the blue tape out. I won't tell you why I know this multiple times because it's very easy to do when you get in a hurry. Uh, but if you have the tape there, it comes right off. So the do not glue places are good for positioning these. And then once you start putting these in, um, you get those in, these will fit in, and you'll glue these together. They pop right in, and then you can grab some little clamps and hold these. And if you're, you know, really anal compulsive, you, or, or OCD, I should. I, I guess that's the proper terminology. You could do that, and then I like to use either these 
are the small ones. And so these can just go right like this. And you can see they, they're gonna fit right over. Um, some of these are small and some of them are big. The big ones are for the doubles and the small ones are for T4 and T5. Um, so most of these are doubles, uh, all on the back are doubles and they can just fit right here. And then you could do that and then leave the, um, the, the big fiberglass ones where they are. Um, and that's, that's what it's gonna look like. When you get this thing done, it's going to be just this nest. Of, of, of colorful clamps and uh, Gilbar fiberglass rods. My wife can't look at a picture of that without gritting her teeth. And her twin sister can't look at it without gritting her teeth. They, they just think it looks wrong. I think it looks beautiful, especially if you color coordinate your clamps and have <laughs> green and blue and yellow. Uh, once these things have set up, Mark, about how long? Oh, certainly. 45 minutes, 45 minutes be plenty. yeah, is, is when you do it. But actually the glue, if you have nice thin glue on it, it's going to, five minutes yeah, five minutes or 10 minutes after that, we could start taking some of these off and sharing them. As long as the joint is wet and it's got glue everywhere, it doesn't take a lot of glue. Yeah. It's, so the, the idea of this is to, to, is to let the glue kind of soak into the outer fibers, but keep it, you know, you have enough glue to glue. Wood is expensive, glue's cheap, um, but then cleaning out glue and squeeze out is a pain. So it's all balance. It's, it's very zen in that regard. Now, can I say one more thing? Yeah, oh, please. We're using tight bond one. There are three kinds of tight bond. Don't mess with tight bond two or tight bond three. It doesn't dry very hard. For context, every guitar Taylor has ever made has been. There, there, the only difference is there, theirs has a little bit of ultraviolet dye in it so that if you put it under a black light you can see the cutting splits out on the but this is the same, the exact same glue that all the manufacturers use and so when you go buy it at the home store for two bucks for that little bottle you're using the same thing everybody else uses it. there's no reason to fuss with it so if you're going to worry about something don't worry about that you'll find something else to worry about one. Oh yeah, I have, I have paper towels ready. And, yeah, and we we have different things you can put them on. Um, one thing I would like: Does anybody have the top piece and that middle orientation piece and the top already cut out so that I can demo one thing? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is, this is fine. Yeah. When you do this one, the secret to building a good BB, Big Baby Taylor is to have the top of the sound hole exactly four inches from the top of the guitar. And so that top of the guitar, the outside of the outer edges, where the neck comes into it, that's where we have established our zero. Because that gives you a zero for the neck at the 14th fret, and it also gives you that zero for where everything falls here. So the this is a four inch hole. Your top of that, uh, this hole goes um, on there. So can I have a top? Does anybody have a top I could just borrow real quick? Have you yeah, given that they're, tops yet? They're, no, they're up there. Okay, if I can have a top. This is where you have to do a little bit of gymnastics and you really you need to have two people. So obviously on the top, you're going to have the rosette. This is called the rosette. And this is going to go down. So whenever you push these down and stuff, make sure, just spend a moment, 
and clean this off. Make sure that there's nothing that's going to press into the wood. Because then it'll make a dent in it, and that's something you have to fix. You're going to do the center line here. So we have that little tiny notch right here. And we have this straight right here. So get this lined up, and then when you mark this top, you'll have that line across also. Here's the deal about doing this. When you're ready to glue, dry fitting, it's not a problem. This has four or five areas where you can uh, apply and locate it. So the idea here is to get this where you want it. And this just fits in right perfect on this hole and then lines up right down the center line. That's easy. So what I like to do is take some of these and just get one of these here and kind of put this, well, hello there. Okay, that's, that's a little bit. If you have this situation right here where it's not high enough, um, we just, um, here it is. So we get this uh, lined up, put this here. After you've dry fitted it and you're painting it, so you'll, you'll have this mark, you paint in here. The other person can apply glue to this surface right here. And then what you have to do is take this off, put this in, and then reposition this. And so now you've got that, then we can lay this down there. And if you spend your time getting this in position perfectly, right on the center line using that hole, then this is going to be exactly where it needs to be so that this is going to butt up right to the heel. But that's the problem with this is you've got to, you don't get this all pinned in with like 17 go bar rods and then try to put this in because it doesn't work. So you actually have to um, have like seven hands, you know, to get that. Once you get this in place, these basically just lock in and then you can use go bar rods on these, um, these guys right here. And what I like to do is hold these down kind of in the middle and then on the edges, and then as you put in your bracing, then once you get your bracing in there, you can take these off and then drop your bracing um, things down and hold it. This is going to give it the, um, that center you want. And again, we have a line that goes across here that should line up with your halfway point and right down the center line. So we have lots of center lines and target points to hit. And again, after that, it's so easy a drummer can build one. So never forget that. It's, huh? It's cool. Yeah. And so um, if you want, you can put these in and get these here and then start working. Two goes down before three because they fit over each other. And you're going to have to, we'll have to talk about uh, sanding those to dry fit. And, and we'll get to that when we get to that. But when we, go bar decks are pretty straightforward once you kind of understand how they work. It's just rods and pressure. And then making sure that they're, they're not too stiff. Um, that's, any, any questions about it? So 